untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu Colored Enchantments deck, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Hallowed Haunting from Crimson Vow, a 4-mana Mythic Rare Enchantment, saying as long as you control 7 or more enchantments, creatures you control have Flying and Vigilance, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, create a white Spirit Cleric creature token, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of spirits you control, so they will incrementally get larger and larger until we hit that 7 enchantment mark, at which point they also gain Flying and Vigilance, and we can usually close out the game in one attack. So Hallowed Haunting is going to be the primary win condition in the deck, and to make sure we can consistently enable it, making those spirit tokens, and also cheaply enable it, so we can potentially cast multiple enchantments in the same turn, we're playing a Runeforged Champion alongside the Rune Package. Runeforged Champion is a 3-mana 2-3 that when it enters a battlefield, lets us search our library and or graveyard for a Rune card, which is a subtype on these enchantment auras that we're playing, reveal it and put it into our hand, and then we can pay one generic mana rather than pay the mana cost for rune spells we cast, and since they typically cost two mana, only paying one mana is quite the discount, making it much easier to string together multiple runes in the same turn to trigger our hallowed haunting and make a bunch of spirit tokens in the process. And then since the runes also draw cards when they enter the battlefield, it also becomes easier to string together multiple of those runes in the same turn, so taking a look at one of them here, Rune of Sustenance, enchants any permanent, and in fact early on in the game it will be correct to enchant our lands sometimes with these runes, so the opponent won't have an easy time removing them, and so we can more easily get to these seven enchantments in play to give our creatures a flying and vigilance. And then in the case of Rune of Sustenance, if the enchanted permanent is a creature, it also has a lifelink, and when the rune enters the battlefield we draw a card, and then we don't really care about the equipment a line of text, then Rune of Mortality is very similar, exchanging a lifelink for Death Touch, and then Rune of Speed gets plus one plus o and haste instead. So these are the 12 runes we're playing, there's also a green rune and a blue rune we could technically play, although if we don't have a runeforged champion in play to make them cost 1 mana, they're going to be difficult to cast and it's difficult to accommodate 5 colors in the mana base. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 2 mana we've got a bit of removal with Circle of Confinement, exiling a creature an opponent controls with mana value 3 or less until Circle of Confinement leaves the battlefield, and then one of the perks of playing black is access to the Meat Hook Massacre, the powerful legendary enchantment that can act as a sweeper, giving all creatures minus X minus X until end of turn, and then whenever a creature we control dies, the opponent loses one life, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we gain one life. So it can also potentially drain the opponent to death if they're playing lots of removal and sweeper effects, in combination with our spirit tokens from Hallowed Haunting, and of course a great answer to the various mono-white aggro decks that have pesky creatures like Thalia and Elite Spellbinder that might slow down our enchantment game plan. So we've got a lot of anti-creature cards, leaving us pretty vulnerable to some of the combo decks in the format like Elrond's Epiphany, and that's where Curse of Silence comes in handy, a 1-mana enchantment aura curse that will enchant the opponent, and as it enters the battlefield we have to choose a card name, and spells with the chosen name enchanted player casts cost 2 generic mana more to cast, so now all of a sudden Elrond's Epiphany costs 8 or maybe 9 mana instead, making it much more difficult to take a lot of extra turns. And then whenever the enchanted player casts a spell with the chosen name, we may sacrifice Curse of Silence and if we do draw a card. So technically, if we don't know what we're up against, we can always name a card in our own deck, enchant ourselves with Curse of Silence, and then we can pay the two mana to essentially cantrip with Curse of Silence, although I don't think that's ever come up yet. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we also have two copies of Borrowed Time as another versatile removal spell that can exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Borrowed Time leaves the battlefield. And then last but not least, we've got more card advantage with Showdown of the Skulls, exiling the top four cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards, and on the second and third chapters, whenever we cast a spell this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, also a great combo with Runeforged Champion and these one mana rune enchantments that we can potentially play. Then the mana base doesn't have room for any creature lands, but we've got three basic planes, one basic swamp, all 12 pathways in the Mardu colors, then two sundown pass, two haunted ridge, and the full playset of shattered sanctum. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games, as the other deck does. 
All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. We've got our champion or haunting and then an anti-creature card with Meat Hook Massacre. Could still be soft to a more controlling strategy. But looks like Mono White Aggro. Now with the Initiate can destroy artifacts and enchantments, we'll have to keep in mind. But for now, I'm liking... Could play the Rune of Speed on one of my lands just to cantrip. Could have also kept it since we have a Runeforge champion to make it cheaper. But we're likely to find more runes. And it might be beneficial to have seven enchantments in place sooner. So this Meat Hook Massacre is looking pretty good. Can play Runeforge champion and then next turn maybe Massacre for two. And then we'll search for maybe the lifelink enchantments. Although it's most likely still going to end up on a land for now. Skyclave can exile the Runeforge. So the hopeful initiate can pick up a counter here. Getting it out of range from our Meat Hook Massacre. Now it's not going to grow next turn unless our opponent has a Luminarch Aspirant. So I could potentially take the risk of waiting on Meat Hook Massacre and playing Hallowed Haunting. There's also Elite Spellbinder to potentially worry about. Otherwise Meat Hook Massacre would still leave the initiative in play, which can then destroy the Hallowed Haunting later. Could also just Circle of Confinement the initiates and then next turn go for Meat Hook Massacre. Which is also reasonable, although then we potentially miss out on some Haunting tokens. So I'll cast the Haunting and we'll see how the opponent responds here. Place Haven, and they do have the Luminarch Aspirant, so that can put the initiates up to 3 power if they pump Usher. So this Meat Hook Massacre is still going to be quite effective. Although it does leave Hopeful Initiate in play. So let's see. Yeah, I can Meat Hook Massacre for 2. Doesn't leave enough mana for anything else, but... We have to Meat Hook Massacre here. So, let's go for it. Gain a ton of life. And get our token from Skyclave. And then next turn we can deal with the Initiate before it hopefully blows up our Hallowed Haunting. They could attack with Faceless Haven, which we're happy to trade for our token. And then the Initiates can hit us for 4. Opponent attacks. Now I could still block to discourage them from blowing up my Hallowed Haunting. Because then if they would remove a counter, the Initiate would die. So I kind of like that play. And then our opponent might just disturb something here. It's going to be a Redan instead. Alright. So... Now... Probably want to exile both creatures. And then doesn't matter too much if I want extra red or black. And then Curse of Silence can target the opponents. And what do we want to name here? What's the scariest card they could play? Maybe Elite Spellbinder, just being a big flyer, although our creatures are close to gaining flying as well. Could just name the uh, Chapel Shieldgeist, I guess. Cost 6 mana now. It's going to be a Thalia. Pretty good against our deck in general. Alright, so probably reasonable to put a Rune of Sustenance on a creature here to start gaining a bit of life back. Can 
can give my new token haste so it can attack right away. And I think that gives us lethal. Alright, sweet. So, was a little bit of a delicate situation with that hopeful initiate. Our opponent did have the Luminarch Aspirant, which punished us for waiting on the Meat Hook Massacre a little bit. Of course, our opponents, after we chumped with the 3-3, they could have just passed a turn, and then instead of playing the Redan, they could have sacrificed a plus one counter to destroy the Hallowed Haunting in our upkeep, which I guess would have been a pretty decent play on their part. So, still was a pretty tricky game. Definitely possible I should have exiled the Hopeful Initiate sooner when I had the chance, but glad it worked out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems pretty decent. We've got our Haunting times two even. And a Meat Hook Massacre to hopefully counteract any aggressive strategies. Now, that being said, opponents with a turn one pack leader, so an aggressive green deck could have creatures that easily survive the Meat Hook Massacre early on. But luckily, no turn two play. So, yeah, play a land and pass. And then hopefully we can start chaining together a couple runes with our champion. Turn 3, Old Growth Troll, not what we wanted to see. So Meat Hook for 1 doesn't seem exciting, so we'll play Runeforge. Which is somewhat likely to get answered. But so it goes, Death Touch seems good here. Ulvenwald Oddity, rumbles in for 4. Yeah, the Meat Hook Massacre is not really equipped to deal with this. So you can trade for Pack Leader, take 8, and then probably still die next turn. Or I can take 11 down to 5 and still probably die next turn. So... Yeah, I guess we'll uh, take it here. Need to draw something pretty powerful. Like a Burrow Time or the Circle of Confinement could have been decent, but yeah, this is not going to cut it. So yeah, green decks, unlike white decks, are a bit more resistant to the Meat Hook Massacre. And our opponent with a beautiful curve here, with a natural growth. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is not amazing, but it could get there if we hit a land drop or two. And then Curse will be great if we're up against the Epiphany deck. And eventually also one mana way to trigger our Hallowed Haunting which is sometimes good enough in creature matchups. Planes into Usher, so... Not the start we wanted to see with this hand. But at least we picked up land number three. Circle's good. Alright, put in blue-white, so more of a tempo deck with maybe a few counter spells. Possibly even worse than regular mono white, given that we want to resolve some expensive four mana cards. So, could play a Curse of Silence here, naming like Spectral Adversary maybe. And then I can still Circle of Confinement the Usher. Which may or may not get countered. Eh, opponent counters our 2-drop thanks to the 
Snare costing two mana with Usher being a spirit. And now we see Clarion spirits. Fair enough. And then we'll wait on Showdown for now. Runeforge. And then I can maybe still play the Curse of Silence. And which rune to get? Don't think it matters too much. Go for Mortality, maybe. And then what to name with Second Curse? Could, of course, go for another Gaslight Snare. What else would a Blue-White Spirits deck have? Yeah, I guess we'll name the Gaslight Snare here. For lack of better cards to name. And then next turn might be a good time for Showdown, as I can still play a land afterwards. Another curse. So right now our opponent can still cast their counterspell for 4 mana here. So I could curse again. And name Snare to make it completely useless. And then still maybe cast a few runes. Although it would be nice to hold them until after a potential Hallowed Haunting. Could also see a 4-mana Spectral Adversary end of turn. Don't have a basic land, so can't really play around Field of Ruin all that well. Just gotta try and diversify my lands that I target. Alright, there's a basic land, so that's good. And now I think I'll hang on to Rune of Sustenance, and then next turn go for Showdown. Yep, there's the 4-mana Adversary. Do I want to sacrifice Curse? I kind of do. And there we go, Hallowed Haunting, exactly what we needed. And now hopefully with our two Curses on Geislight Snare, the opponent won't be able to counter it as easily. Now they probably have the Spirit Lord in their deck as well, which would have been another decent name on Curse of Silence. So, Haunting, might as well play a land first. And then I can play one mana rune afterwards. And we're just one enchantment away from giving our tokens flying. So, if nothing crazy happens, we can slowly start pulling ahead as another adversary joins the fun. It's gonna phase out my Runeforge champion so the ground creatures can maybe attack. And yep, there's the Patrician Geist pumping all spirits, so that's a lot of damage coming in. Is it lethal 13? I guess I could take it, and then... Yeah, hope to string together a lot of spells next turn. It's not impossible. Start with Showdown. And then I might want to leave black mana available for Meat Hook Massacre, but I guess your opponent's creatures are large enough to survive it. And I'll only have X equals 1 available. So, yeah, go to Showdown and then hope to um, string together a lot of 1 mana runes, basically. Okay, can also give one of the tokens lifelink now. Alright, so we won't be able to play Meat Hook Massacre just to trigger Haunting, but I can attack for 5. And then gain 3, and hopefully that keeps me alive. Yep, 
We've got another showdown, so we can rebuild pretty quickly. Even if I have to trade away some spirit tokens. And our opponent knows the Metog Massacre is incoming next turn, so... We can reset the board if needed. So our opponent sends the team. So we'll try and soak up as much damage as possible, knowing we can reset the board next turn. So I guess I could prevent one more damage, which is probably worth doing here. Just trade off everything and then only take three. All right, so let's meat hook. And then X equals two should be enough. And then I can still show down afterwards so we don't wipe away our own hallowed haunting token. another showdown, so we should be able to pull ahead now. And our opponent concedes, they see all our goodies in exile, and we can storm off with our spirits now. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Good mix of interaction and combo pieces to hopefully dig us towards our hallowed haunting. And then might want to get double black going, even though I guess I won't be able to play rune, so this is probably better. And then I might want to play rune on turn two just to make sure I hit my land drops, and then we have to double black for massacre if needed. Shambling Ghast. Now, unfortunately, opponent is likely to have Field of Rune in their mana base which can mess us up, but uh, I'll put a rune on a land we care about least. So not gonna be the best matchup for Meat Hook Massacre, but a good matchup for Showdown, as her opponent's not really gonna mess with the stack or our hand too much. And yeah, there we see Field of Rune already. So if we find a basic planes, all right, never mind. Check for traps, not a card you typically see in these mono black decks, but uh, pretty annoying here being able to take away our showdown of the skulls, which I imagine is what they'll take. Opponent knows how to play around our meat hook massacre now. So yeah, that was quite painful. Search for another rune, doesn't matter too much which one. So now we're still hoping to find our Hallowed Haunting, which if we can resolve it, is gonna be great. Surprised to see them run out Sedgemore Witch into a known Meat Hook Massacre, but I'm not gonna complain. Maybe they have another one and they just wanna force the issue. I guess Shambling Gas can finish off Runeforge Champion. Which, I guess we could just circle the witch as well. Interesting spot. Didn't really want to lose my rune forge since we have a couple runes in hand. So maybe circling the witch for now is fine. And then... Probably fine to cast a couple runes here, see what else we draw. Should have kept white mine untapped, so I could have still played a curse if I drew one, which I did. Although, not even sure what to name exactly. So, yeah, I'll keep casting runes and keep spreading them out. Alright, another showdown is great. 
Now, if opponent jumps to make a treasure, it's possible they want to cast Spider Queen next turn, which would have been a reason not to attack and wait until we can deploy Curse of Silence. But we'll see what happens. Opponent took the two damage. So they're playing a pretty unusual version of Mono Black, I would say. Soft Consumption, also another card you often see. Alright, there's a basic swamp which we can load our runes onto now. But, um... I think we still want to showdown for now. Might leave me unable to cast Curse of Silence this turn, but want to be able to potentially play two lands from exile. And then what would I name with Curse of Silence? It has to be either Spider Queen or maybe Professor Onyx. Could also go for Blood on the Snow, which could wipe away all our spirits once we do go off with Hallowed Haunting. So that's the third option. Alright, we'll play the one from Exile. And then I guess Spider Queen for now, and then the next curse can name Blood on the Snow. So Spider Queen costing 7 mana now. And we'll attack. If they jump, they could technically cast Professor Onyx next turn. So, we'll see. Right, it's gonna be a deadly dispute anyway. This opponent has a lot of mana to work with. They could still play a Spider Queen. Instead of Senchmore Witch. This time, Meat Hook Massacre can deal with it cleanly without me losing Runeforge Champion. So... Yeah, a little strange that they're playing it into the Meat Hook, which I'm tempted to play anyways. Alright, they do have the Shambling Ghast again to finish off Runeforge at least, but we're also gonna get a plus one counter from Showdown, so Meat Hook for two still lets the Champion survive. That works. And then the next Curse of Silence probably goes for Blood on the Snow. Which they're likely to have four copies of on their deck. Alright, there we go. And we can attack for two. So, still haven't drawn our Hello Taunting. We've gone through two copies of Showdown, but there's still plenty of runes in the deck we can chain together to eventually find one of those. Kick Bloodchief's Thirst kills Champion, that's okay. At least we're not dying anytime soon. As we draw another land. Alright, so don't have much going on. Opponent knows about the Meat Hook Massacre in hand, which they're welcome to force me to use or take away with another discard spell. There's Spider Queen. I think we got a draw here. Find some action. Alright, let's kick things off with Rune of Mortality on my basic planes. Finding another curse, which could name Spider Queen once again. If I massacre for one, opponent gets a three loyalty Spider Queen again, so it doesn't do a whole lot. So I guess we'll uh, Rune of Speed for now. Right, find another Runeforge champion. So next turn I could maybe set up a play where I massacre the spiders and then Runeforge with haste can finish off Spider Queen. So for now, what's my play? Don't think I want to play the Runeforge champion right now. And then do I want to curse? Maybe on... Uh, 
Professor Onyx instead of Spider Queen. And then we'll let the spiders hit us for a turn. Oh yes. I know the knowledge you seek. Graveyard trespasser. That's okay. So we can let's see, do we have enough mana for massacre? For three. Play Runeforge and give it haste. We have just enough. So that's gonna be our plan. Now Spider Queen did gain a bit of loyalty back. Do what I demand. But at least we can hit her. Alright, and there's her haunting at long last, so... <laughs> next turn we can play it. So if they don't make us discard... Once it's in play for Mono Black, it's going to be very hard to answer unless they're playing main deck Feed the Swarm. I guess the Lesson Package could also get it done with Introduction to Annihilation. <laughs> My hatred lives. All right, Meadok Massacre for three in return. It's only fair. And we get to play our Haunting and Exile Spider Queen. Like Alright. I could cast the Meat Hook Massacre just to make another Spirit Token. I think we'll hang on to it. And then, yeah, we just want to find another Showdown of the Skulls, Runeforged Champion. Or just string together a couple runes. Alright, Duress makes me regret not playing Massacre. And a Massacre for one cleans up my spirit token. Alright, it's gonna be a long road to close out this game. Now I can keep lands in hand in case they have more discard spells they want to use. Although if we do find a showdown it's possible I'll need a lot of mana. So I probably still want to play out my second land. But I'm still stuck on five, so it's possible they'll have Blood on the Snow, Professor Onyx in hand that they simply haven't been able to cast so far. Second Haunting is excellent. So it doesn't take much now for Haunting to present a lethal army of spirits. Land 7, so next turn we could already see Blood on the Snow. So we have to be mindful of not overextending. Opponent also has Field of Ruin, which could remove up to two enchantments here from our lands, but we'll still have seven for uh, Hallowed Haunting purposes. So hit a pocket of land, sadly. Opponent still has a lot of spells in hand. Down to 26 cards. Don't really want to trade for Eye Twitch when we can make our spirit larger. But our opponent might have a deadly dispute. Environmental Sciences to get that land to eventually cast their six drops. Blood on the Snow can get back Sedgemore Witch. At least our tokens fly, so we can ignore those ground pests. And then, do I want to sacrifice my curse? I think I do, since we need to find more action.
and uh, Dreadfugue can snipe the rune that I just picked up, sadly. Alright, let's try that again. And then we don't want to overextend necessarily into another sweeper. So the question is, am I satisfied with two two to spirit tokens? It's probably not enough. Alright. And then we'll play out a land. So now they'll have to wipe the board again. And there's another blood on the snow. Meat Hook Massacre keeps us entertained. So double blood on the snow down at least. And there's a champion. So we'll get the uh, haste rune so I can get in some damage right away. Circle can deal with the Sedgemore Witch. Hopefully they're out of sweepers now, although I wouldn't count on it. Blood on the snow number three. Okay. Well, still have double showdown, double hello taunting as excellent draws but we're running out of runes. So it's going to be difficult to string together multiple enchantments in the same turn, unless we find Showdown. There's haunting number three. Prevents it from switching to nighttime as well. Might see another spider queen here to match our spirits. Nope, there's Professor Onyx instead, so at long last, I think we sacrifice a curse. or something. This is my favorite part. Watch the life essence fade. And then if I can pick up another enchantment, we could maybe massacre the trespasser without losing the spirits. Alright, that's gonna make it more difficult. So Onyx puts on a lot of pressure here. Combination with a trespasser. Yeah, if I Meat Hook Massacre for three, I would kill Trespasser, but I would also kill all my tokens. So maybe I just Meat Hook for zero. And then, um, you know, at least make a couple tokens to block Trespasser. Could have cast it for two and have the spirit survive, but... Three is not quite enough. So our opponent is down to 27 cards, we're down to 16. Quite a discrepancy in number of lands drawn. And we've battled through triple blood on the snow, so there's only one left. Envy the strong, for they aren't I generous. 
and an eye twitch, so a lot of blockers here. Trespasser attacks. I might have to double block here, even though that shrinks down my spirits. If I draw another enchantment, they'll be pretty large again, and I don't want to take infinite damage from this trespasser. Triple block in case of instant speed removal, in which case we at least still kill the trespasser. really needed a spell here. All right, I guess um, we just pass. Don't really want to trade for spiders. So, opponent gets to untap with Spider Queen and Onyx. Those spiders also have menace. Yeah, it's not looking great for the home team. Opponent must have found a pretty good card if they're binning Bloodchief's Thirst. Dispute to draw. Might just die to Onyx triggers. And the spiders are threatening lethal as well here. Opponent's down to 17 cards in the meantime, so they made up for the lost card advantage. So, I can take one, I can block, let them learn, which is probably worse for me, because then they could cast another spell to trigger Onyx. So I'll take the one. But I have to imagine we're dead here. No, we get to untap, borrow time, is an answer to Professor Onyx. And then could send the tokens at Spider Queen, could go face. Guess we'll go after Spider Queen. Although they probably have a backup in hand. There's also still the fourth Blood on the Snow to worry about, plus potentially additional copies of Meat Hook Massacre. So we're not out of the woods yet. Luckily, the Meat Hook Massacre doesn't quite finish us off. Now, it's also important whose turn it is, because if it's our turn, the opponent's Meat Hook Massacre triggers will resolve first, and the opponent's turn it's the other way around, which can also make a huge difference here. Mm, yep, there's Meat Hook Massacre for five. Opponent learns, and then really need a showdown of the skulls here to have a chance. At long last, our opponent casts a discard spell that misses. Alright, big top deck coming up. There's Showdown, all right, making us sweat. And now we need some enchantments. Well, this has been an epic game, win or lose. So nine cards left. Gotta hope our opponent's out of sweepers now. And then 
probably fine to rune one of my spirits. Don't have any way of giving haste since all the runes of speed are gone. But let's go big or go home. Alright, well, show me what you've got. The lifelink might be important to keep us alive in case our opponent tries to drain us to death with Meat Hook Massacre. Spider Queen draws. Do they have the fourth Blood on the Snow? Professor Onyx instead. Uh oh. It's gonna plus, so they're still digging for their sweeper as opposed to minusing. Let's go digging. And a mascot exhibition, I don't think that's gonna be good enough. The rune of sustenance keeps us alive and we should have more than enough on the way back. Wow, this has to be at least top 5 best games ever played. Let me make sure I don't mess this last attack up somehow. Might as well showdown first. Grow the lifelinker. And yeah, let's attack. I don't want to draw too many more cards. Oof, what a game. Well, I'm glad I hit record to get this one on camera. There we go. Wow. So I usually don't ask for likes, but uh, could you hit the like button for this one? Much appreciated. So yeah, we got to see our Mardu Enchantments deck in action. And oh boy, this last game almost felt like it had an anime arc. Lots of ups and downs and uh, kept us on our toes until the very last moment. So very happy with how the deck turned out. Of course, sometimes you're going to get run over by aggro decks like we saw in the mono green matchup against Control, if they can counter your big payoff cards like Hallowed Haunting, Showdown, then it's also going to be difficult to necessarily get anything going. But a lot of Control decks nowadays don't play a ton of hard counters, it's more divide by zero to bounce stuff, can eventually get the Hallowed Haunting going, which also, as you could see in this last game, can eventually overpower most sweeper effects. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.